All right, let's make some tiramisu. Now I'm going to go all out and make every bit of the ingredients that go into this from the ladyfinger sponge to the mascarpone cream. But if you want to use store-bought ladyfinger uh, sponge, that's absolutely okay. Um, but if you love an extra homemade touch, it is actually really, really easy to make this sponge. So first I am going to sift the dry ingredients, the flour, and cornstarch. Now, oftentimes I am on the lazier side when it comes to sifting things and I opt not to whenever possible. This is not one of those recipes you want to do that. You really want to make sure those are sifted. Then the egg whites are going into the mixer. I am going to whip this up and add in my sugar, creating a French meringue here. Now, if you want to use a hand mixer for this, that's absolutely okay. You do not need a stand mixer for this recipe. It's just what I use in my kitchen. So as my egg whites are looking nice and fluffy, I'll start streaming in the granulated sugar and I'll continue whipping this up. Now, some people have different preferences when it comes to the ladyfinger sponge. I like something between a medium stiff peak tending towards more of a stiff peak. I really like this to be nice and firm. Then as the mixer is on a low speed, I'm going to incorporate in the egg yolks and mix just until it is thoroughly incorporated. I don't wanna see any streaks of egg yolks, but I also don't want to completely deflate the meringue I created. This is why I really like to start with a stiff meringue or a medium stiff meringue so that even after I incorporate in the egg yolks, it's still at like a medium to medium stiff uh, consistency. Now I'm going to fold in those sifted dry ingredients. If you don't sift the flour, you might end up with a few little clumps of flour, which is really not a great texture for this sponge. So that is why that is super important. And now I'm just going to incorporate this just until I can't see any of those dry ingredients. So for me, I really like to have a pretty stiff batter to pipe with. So again, adding in this dry ingredient is going to deflate some of that meringue that we just created. And if we start off with like a medium, medium soft peak, we are going to deflate so much of the air, it is going to become much harder to pipe and have a really nice texture later on. So after that is done, I'm going to put it immediately into my piping bag, pipe this sponge, and then get it into the oven. I am not using a template. I feel very comfortable just piping these little lines of sponge. It looks a lot like an eclair, which is something I've piped a lot of over the years. So if you are newer to a ladyfinger sponge shape, if this is the first time you're doing this, I would recommend making yourself a template. Just get a piece of paper, Find out the you know dimensions you want, just create a couple lines, use a ruler and a permanent marker, and then just slip that underneath your baking mat. Whether you're using a silicone mat like I am here, if you want to use Teflon or parchment, that's completely okay. So I'm just going to pipe all of this batter out here, and then I am going to sift some powdered sugar over the top. Now again, if you want to use a store-bought ladyfinger, that's completely okay, but usually the store-bought ladyfingers are quite hard and you really, really need to soak them in a lot of syrup before it will soften and have a really nice texture, whereas these already have a fantastic texture and the soak is just for extra flavor and extra texture on top of that. Um, but you don't have to worry quite so much about getting everything totally saturated. I am going to just sprinkle everything with some powdered sugar, then get this into my oven. These will bake up quite quickly. We just want them to be a really nice golden brown. They are going to puff up slightly, which is why I left some space in between all of them, but they shouldn't get ginormous or explode everywhere. They should more or less stay where you piped them.
Now I'm really quickly going to create my coffee soak. I have an espresso machine, so I am just going to create some coffee that way. If you want to use regular brewed coffee, if you want to use cold brew, either that you've bought from a store or that you've made at home, any kind of coffee is okay. I have used all of those variations before and it works out just fine. Then I have some Marcella wine. If you would rather use something like Kahlua or rum, that's absolutely okay. If you don't want to use alcohol at all, that's okay. Just the coffee, just a decaf coffee is okay no matter what is best for you. I'm gonna set that soak aside and work on the mascarpone cream here. Then we'll be able to build this tiramisu. I am using an egg yolk based uh, mascarpone cream. So I'm starting with my egg yolks and sugar. Make sure to whisk those together right away or the egg yolks can get quite strange. And then I'm putting that onto a double boiler. Now, because this is just a cream, it is not going to be baked or heated later on. We need to make sure that we cook the egg yolks enough so that they are totally safe to eat eat. So what this is doing here, I'm going to whisk this occasionally, allow that sugar to melt, dissolve into the egg yolk, and this I'm going to heat up to about 75 degrees Celsius. You will see the texture change a bit. It will become more like a liquid. Um, as you are whisking, you will be able to feel and see that the color will lighten slightly, especially as you're whisking, incorporating a bit of air into this. Then once it hits that 75 degree temperature, you can take it off the heat, immediately add in the mascarpone. This is going to allow the heat from the egg yolk mixture to incorporate into the mascarpone, help that melt down a bit, and everything will incorporate really smoothly. After you whisk this a bit, if you notice you have any little lumps in there you really want to get rid of, you can get in there with an immersion blender, but usually the heat from the yolk mixture is enough to completely incorporate the uh, mascarpone without any problem. Then we're gonna let that cool down just a little bit and work on the very final step for this cream, the whipped cream component. This is what is going to give us that really airy mousse-like texture in this cream. So I just have some cream and vanilla paste. I am using a hand mixer here. Again, you can use a stand mixer, hand mixer, whatever is best for you. And this, again, I like to have a pretty uh, decent structure here for this particular um, cream. So I want something that's like a medium stiff to stiff peak on the cream, but anything above medium peak should be totally okay. After I whip that cream, I'm going to slowly incorporate it into the mascarpone and egg yolk mixture about one third at a time. First third of the cream I'll add in there, use my whisk to incorporate it. This will lighten up that mascarpone mixture and create something a lot more similar to a mousse. Then as I add in another third and another third of that whipped cream, I will use a spatula just to make sure I'm not deflating any of the air in the cream mixture or over mixing anything. I'm just going to fold this all together. As soon as I don't see any streaks of the white cream, it is time to build the tiramisu. Now I have everything in front of me. I have an eight by eight container. I have the cream, that coffee soak, my baked and cooled ladyfinger sponge, and I'm ready to go. I'm gonna dip my ladyfinger sponge all sides into the coffee and Marcella wine mixture, then into the bottom of my pan. You can honestly use whatever container you want. If you want to use an individual sort of container, if these are individual desserts, or if you want to have a really high uh, tiramisu with more layers or something more stretched out, depending on 
you know, if you're making a one time batch of this recipe or a two times batch, you can start using a lot of different containers. But I really like this eight by eight one because I can fit two rows of my ladyfinger sponge in the bottom. Then I'm going to go in with about one third to one half of the mascarpone cream and then just use an offset spatula to smooth that over the top. Personally, I like to have a little bit extra cream on the top, which is why I usually do a little bit less than half of the cream for this layer. After I get this smoothed out, I'm going to go in and do the exact same process all over again. Soak the ladyfinger sponge, put it on top of the cream there, and just make sure that all of the ladyfinger sponges are completely soaked and also touching they're right next to each other you don't want any gaps otherwise you'll have some gaps in the dessert later on where there are pockets of just cream or no sponge which isn't quite as fun to eat after this layer of sponge is complete all the rest of the cream can go on top again just use an offset spatula to smooth everything out make sure everything is evenly coated and you have a nice flat surface to the top of your tiramisu the very last step is a really nice thick layer of cocoa powder this is so important for a classic tiramisu just use a small strainer or like a tea strainer or anything like that to sift the cocoa powder over the top of the tiramisu again a really nice thick even layer all across the entire surface you want it to look like it is completely covered in chocolate now this needs to go into the refrigerator for the ideal texture and taste results i recommend doing it overnight but anything past three or four hours is okay so if you want to make this the morning of that you are serving it that's totally fine but the longer it's in the fridge the more it is going to have a chance to all kind of meld together and it will just be incredible the first piece is always a challenge to get out especially if you're trying to do it like <laughs> with a fork as i am but all you need to do to serve this is then scoop it out if you've made a family style portion like i have here or if you have the individual portion, you can just serve that as is and it is done. I hope you give this recipe a try. I have really been enjoying making tiramisu several times this past year and I love, love, love this recipe. If you give it a try, make sure to tag me so I can see your end results. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you in the next video. Until then, have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.